Hello everyone, I wanted to make a uh, video sermon this morning. Uh, I'm going to start out, I'm going to be in Ephesians 4.29. And then I'm going to read one more verse and then I'm going to talk to you. Uh, it, it said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. And 1 Thessalonians 5.11, let me turn over it here to it. Won't take me but just a minute, maybe. And uh, it says, Wherefore comfort you yourselves together and edify one another, even also as ye do. And uh, so I wanted to talk to us about edifying one another. Um, and I've talked a lot about different things. Um, but I've talked a lot about we need to build each other up and not tear down. It doesn't take anything to tear down. <coughs> and uh, I think I've showed you this book, Building Takes Skill, Tearing Down None, which is a, but it's by J.D. Cantor. And uh, it's available through Amazon. I, I, do, I reference a lot in this book. And... Uh, He's dedicated a chapter to to something like this, and I think I'm gonna read a few pages to you. Um, you notice the name is J.D. Cantor. It's a lot of things in here that that I say, and it's no coincidence because I wrote the book, but uh, I put it in a pen name, J.D. Cantor, and uh, I've got there is this one, uh, and also. <clears throat> You, you can Google J.D. Cantor on Amazon, and there is, uh, there's two more. Uh, so it's uh, How to Navigate the Storms of Life, I think it is, and Live First, Die Last. Everybody needs to know how to navigate the storms of life, uh, and then Live First, Die Last. Uh, it's a concept I talk about at our church a lot. You know, the cemetery is a is a is a talented place. It's more it's got more riches than Fort Knox or the gold mines or the silver mines or the diamond mines or or whatever. Uh, the uh, grave there's talents that's never been used. There's songs that's never been sung. There's uh, sermons that's never been preached. Uh, Love that's never been expressed. Apologies never given. So let's let me read you. It won't take me long, I don't think. And uh, so I think we'll still be somewhere in the 10-minute range, I hope. But this book that, that's written by J.D. Cantor, or in other words, myself, says, Be a builder up or not a tear down her. It seems it takes so much time for someone to build a building, but someone can tear it down in just a few hours. Anyone can be the tear downer, but it takes skill to be the builder upper. I heard a story of a little boy watching a, op a man operate a wrecking ball, a machine with a wrecking ball. That story came from Brother David Jones. Uh, and it says the man was tearing down a building and the little boy was watching, looking up. And he asked the man if that was hard to do. The man said that it was easy. It wouldn't take him long to tear down something that took years for someone else to build. It takes no skill to tear someone down. It takes no skill to destroy their hopes and dreams, but it's a skillful person that can build other person, other people up. I hear people say all the time, I'm not a help, but I'm not a hindrance. Oh, yes, you are. If you're not a help, then you are a hindrance. You cannot ride the fence. You will fall off on one side or the other. You will fall to the help side or to the side that hinders. I made the statement once that I wanted to leave the walks of this life the day I started hindering. As soon as I could, I told them I wanted to make a correction to that statement. I said that in, in a church service. At the beginning, I said I uh, wanted to leave the day I started hindering, and then on over in a service, I corrected it and said I wanted to leave the day before. I don't want to leave the day I start hindering, but I want to leave the day before. There's too many people, too many things that a person can do to help others that there should be no reason 
to ever think about hindering someone else. There's so much power in our words. Many people go to bed tonight starving and in need of food, but there's so many more that will go to bed starving for words of encouragement. I was a manager of an office for about 10 months. The other man that replaced me called me after they had their first meeting. He said, our meeting was about you this morning. I couldn't believe they would talk about me since I was already gone, and I asked him what could possibly be said about me. He told me that they spoke about what an encourager I was. He said the word is on the street about you, that you are an encourager. I want to make a difference. I want people to feel me when I come, and I want and feel me when I leave. I want to leave my fingerprint in DNA so that the world would know I've been here. Encouragement builds up and criticism tears down. Are you an encourager? A medical student tells this experience. During the second month of nursing school, the professor gave us a pop quiz. I was a conscientious student and had breezed through the questions until I read the last one. What is the first name of the woman who cleans the school? Surely this is some kind of a joke. I had seen the cleaning woman several times. She was tall and dark haired and in her 50s. But how could anyone know her name? I handed in my paper, paper, leaving the question blank. Before the class ended, one student asked if the last question would count towards our quiz grade. Absolutely, said the professor. In your career, you'll meet many people. They are significant. They deserve your attention and care. Even if all you do is smile and say hello. I have never forgotten that lesson. I, always, I also learned her name was Dorothy. People need a kind word. Be like Jesus. Give one away. I included a poem in here. It says, If you want to kill the church, never go to your church or meetings help there. If you do go, be late. It's no one's affair. If the weather's bad, either hot or snowing, just stay home and rest, for there'll be others going. But should you attend, be sure to remember to find fault with the work, each official and member. Be sure to hold back on your offerings and tithes. The bills will be paid by the rest of the guys. And never take office if offered the post, but eagerly criticize work of the host. It's not a, on a committee you're placed. Be, if, if not on a committee you're placed, be sore. If you find that you are, don't attend anymore. When asked your opinion on this thing or that, have nothing to say. Just turn them down flat. Then after the meeting, shine out like the sun by telling folks how it should have been done. Don't do any more than you possibly can. Leave the work for some other woman or man. And when you see faithful ones work themselves sick, then stand up and holler. It's run by a click. I'd give credit to this, but I don't remember where this came from. But anyway, bless their hearts. The tear down has not seen the light yet. He has no idea how much they can get people to do by praising rather than criticizing. Although he's never tried praising, he's convinced that criticizing is the only way to go about things. There's only one way he's ever had that model to him. Praising is so much higher than criticizing as far as the East is from the West. A wife should try it with her husband. The husband should try it with his wife. The parents should try it with their children. The teachers should try it with their students. I've heard remarks insinuating if you praise people, you'll ruin them and give them the big head. How true this is, if you're talking about one out of ten people. But is not the other nine more valuable than just one? Because in the other nine of them, the other nine of them will be greatly helped in my opinion. Nagging doesn't help wives change husbands. My mother used to make a big deal when I did something right and now she, and she was my cheering section. A man gets married and mother's not there to clap and cheer and he winds up in confusion. The Bible speaks about speaking the truth in love. I have found that I have found that whatever you say and put no love with it winds up having no effect. Love can run around the block six times or more before criticism can even get its shoes on. If you want to run a marriage, just start criticizing. One day a man starts to take out the garbage and never comes back and the wife is left wondering what happened. People criticized and bullied, people that are criticized and bullied commit suicide and people act like they don't understand why, but we know. We really know. When a woman is not talking, the husband is asking, what's wrong? He's asking what is wrong, but he really knows. 
you cannot be married to someone for a very long time, not not just the, and not know just about everything about them. It's just a game we play pretending that we don't know. I don't know about you, but I'm tired. I'm just about tired of playing games, especially flesh games. Flesh games like who's going to get credit or who will sit on the left hand or the right. Who cares about this bunch of foolishness? While we're trying to figure out who is the most important per most important, people are dying in the shadows of the steeples of our churches. It reminds me of the story about the Good Samaritan when everyone walked past the man in need. We're too busy to see about the needs of others. We should rather concentrate on what the man did to get him we would rather concentrate on what the man did to get himself in trouble than what we might do to help him. The scripture says the man was half dead. That's what we concentrate on. Instead of the fact that he, if he's half dead, then he must also be half alive also. Before we help someone, with, we quiz them about what they did wrong. If they, if they had done like us, then they wouldn't be in this trouble. I heard a story about where a father told his son not to get in the water too deep. The son started drowning and called for help. The father started yelling that he had told him so while the son continued to drown. The son pleaded with his father to save him, and then he could scold. This is a picture of us. We scold first and save later when we should save first and scold later. Scold later. Uh, this book it's got a lot of grammatical areas. Uh, there's some. Uh, I, it took me a, a while to write. Uh, I would tell a story in the first chapter and maybe get over to chapter 9 or 10 and forget I had put included that story and tell it again. But it's a lot of things that you, uh, someone read the book and didn't know that I was the author of it. And they said it sounds a whole lot like, like a child of God. And then another one read it and said that's after they found out who it was said I thought that sounded a whole lot of what Brother Dale said. Anyway, building takes skill, tearing down none, available on Amazon Kindle under J.D. Cantor. And uh, there's two more books on there. I think one of them is How to Navigate the Storms of Life or something like that. And the other one is Live First, Die Last. But if you, if you put... And J.D. Cantor, it should bring them up to you. I care about you. Uh, thank you for letting me share this with you today. Uh, don't know when we're going to die. I wanted you to know about it, that it was out there if you needed it. Uh, that that was on my bucket list, <laughs> if you believe in a bucket list. I, I wanted to do that. I wanted to write a book. So I did, 2016, I think. So uh, uh, I've still got, I'm trying to check them all off because, uh, I've already had uh, a heart attack that they said it was uh, a cheated death. I was at death's door, and I've had cancer after that, and now I've got other, you know, physical problems. So we don't never know when we're gonna leave. So I'm trying to check all my boxes and uh, make sure everything's okay. Uh, this these things I'm making uh, will, will be a of things left of me be part of my inheritance to you and so uh, I love you as I start to say well God, I love you with all my heart and may God bless you until we do this again I'm going to give you my number 256-508-4410 let me know uh, what you need and, and about this book if you want me to read some more of it to you or, or whatever just let me know give me some feedback I'm thinking about doing a series on Proverbs. There's 31 Proverbs, I believe, so it would be a pretty lengthy series. But just let me know your thoughts, because I value them. Until next time.